Up with Krim begins now. Right now on Up with Krim, Democrats sent a strongly worded letter to Governor Inslee about pausing the reopening plan. This morning, they're looking for ways to override his decision. And a state organization just started a petition for Governor Inslee to set a date to completely reopen the state. We're one of the few states that doesn't have a reopen plan. This morning, the date they're hoping we will agree to this summer. And it's cloudy in Coeur d'Alene, sunny in Spokane. I'll let you know the reason for the difference earlier this morning. Well, good morning. Welcome to Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol. We are tracking breaking news now at 7. A suspect has been arrested this morning after a standoff in Spokane last night. The incident happened on North Regal and East Cinto. That's near Chief Gary Park. We have Nicole Hernandez live on scene this morning. Nicole, what can you tell us about what's going on? Yeah, Dane Marie Tim. So we were able to get an update from Spokane police. They said that overnight they arrested Jeffrey Matlock. He had a warrant out for his arrest because of a drug possession and drug distribution. It all happened, of course, here on this corner. You can see behind me and it's all cleared up now. But take a look at this video. This is what went down last night. Our crew got to the scene around 1030 PM. They said there was about half a dozen police cars plus the SWAT team. It was a combination of Spokane Police Department and Spokane Police SWAT that ended up making the arrest. That arrest happened around 2 a.m. Again, uh, that person is now in custody. Uh, the suspect uh, did not you know, make any danger to the community here. There was at no point any issue with the with the community here. No one was in danger around here, but there were several police cars in this area again for hours overnight. Police were able to go through the house, search the house though, according to the person who lives there, um, and now things are back to normal, cleared up, and if if you are going to be in this area, it will uh, be back to normal again. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Nicole, thanks so much for that update. Another big story we're tracking now today. A middle school in southeastern Idaho is closed after a shooting yesterday. Well, three people are injured and a suspect is now in custody. According to medical officials, all three victims suffered non life threatening extremity injuries. The local sheriff says a sixth grade girl walked into Rigby Middle School pulled a handgun from her back and started firing. A teacher was able to disarm the girl until authorities arrived and took her into custody. This morning, a lot of parents say their kids are safe, but some are shaken up about what happened. The phone started blowing up from my other daughter, and she wanted to know if, if Marin was okay. And I said, I, why wouldn't she be? She's at school, and she said there was a shooting. And I was in a store up the street, and I just dropped everything. And I just ran out screaming there was a shooting at the school and I drove over here. I was only half a mile from here and I drove over and just jumped out of my car and started running. Wow. Well, this morning, the sheriff's office in that area is still trying to determine a motive for the shooting. The school staff member that was shot was treated and released and the two students were held overnight for observation but are expected to be okay. Well, the last school shooting in Idaho was 22 years ago when a 16 year old boy opened fire inside a junior senior high school in notice. And this is a developing story. So, of course, we're going to keep you updated here on Up With Krem, but also Krem.com. Just about 7.04 now, meteorologist Jeremy Legoo is in the Outdoor Weather Center. Happy Friday, Jeremy. Ooh, it's and Friday. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Happy Friday to all the moms <laughs> out there. It is Mother's Day weekend. Don't forget to call your mom, write her a yeah. note, buy Send her flowers, flowers, make her feel special and loved. Yeah, it's not often I get to say this and not sound like a total weirdo. Shout out to all the moms out there. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the moms. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we're taking into Friday. Mom shout outs. Hey, mom, if you're watching back in Minnesota, hi, I love you. All right, well, we've got a little bit of cloud cover here in Coeur d'Alene. Up over the top of me, it's nothing but blue skies. There's one stray cloud blocking the sun. And right now, I'm kind of thankful for it. It, it winds up making me look all weird out here. Not that no sun helps, but anyway, 45 here in Spokane. You cross over into Coeur d'Alene, 49, 50 in Sandpoint this morning. Temperatures are quite a bit cooler than where they've been. It does feel quite a bit cooler out here, and it even Kind of smells a little bit cooler out here. It's a nice, cool spring morning. Oh, and that follows our cold front that moved through last night. But I look out to the east and it's nothing but blue skies and those blue skies are coming for you 
as we head through the next few hours. Those blue skies take over, but by this afternoon, we get this next round of showers building in. Those are going to be isolated, not near as widespread as what this makes it look like. I do think we see another round of those isolated scattered showers, then it moves out, and then we'll start clearing out and drying out as we head into the weekend. But hour by hour, breaking it down for you, wind stop, it's just a little bit cool. It says 50 by 7, I'm here to tell you it's 45 and it feels like it. And it's going to take a while for those temps to climb. I think by about 10 a.m. we should be up near 50 and by this afternoon, well, we stay in the 50s. We'll climb to the upper 50s later on today. It's going to be about 20 to 25 degrees colder than what you felt yesterday across the entire inland northwest. Jeremy, thanks so much. Some Pierce County leaders say Governor Inslee isn't being fair by pausing the state's reopening plan. They say they will take, a, take action if he won't. Yesterday, representatives sent a bipartisan letter to Governor Inslee saying the pause of changes a set of rules that they consistently guided reopening decisions. The legislature may now look to override the governor. In the letter, we talk about, you know, we, we um, you had a decision that we didn't like. We're asking to address that and work together on that. And um, if we're not able to do that, we are going to call and, and say, hey, there are legislative options that we're going to ask to be considered as well. Governor Inslee responded, saying he is standing by his decision, writing there have been stark differences between the acceleration of in the infection rate experienced in Pierce County and the plateauing of infections statewide. Well, a business group asked the state to fully reopen Washington's economy by June 15th. The Washington State Hospitality Association is circulating a petition to send to Governor Inslee. Now, the head of the group repeatedly pointed to a graphic highlighting all the states they say have a reopening plan. But when you look around the, the country and you talk about where everyone else is at, uh, we're one of the few states that doesn't have a reopen plan. One of two. California and Oregon both aim to fully reopen economies by June 15th and June 30th, respectively. Recently, 15 counties in Oregon had to ban indoor dining under the state's rules. Those restrictions are partially being lifted today. Time for your morning rush. More news in less time. The Idaho Department of Corrections is looking for a walkaway inmate. Officers say he stole a pickup truck and left his job site in Newdale, Idaho, the St. Anthony work camp. Now take a look at your screen. This is 25 year old Manuel Betty. He was last seen around 530 Thursday evening. He was wearing a red shirt and blue jeans. The stolen truck is a white Chevrolet, Chevrolet pickup truck with plate number 1MC7786. Anyone with information on his whereabouts should call 911. Well, Cougs may have to pay a little more for tuition. Washington State University is looking into a tuition increase for the 2021-2022 school year. Now, the Board of Regents will meet today to consider raising tuition by 2.5%. The university says the extra money will go towards mental health support, housing, and food insecurity services. If approved, the majority of WSU students will see an approximate $130 per semester rise in tuition. Well, mark your calendars for May 21st. That's the official opening for the new playground at Riverfront Park. It's been a long awaited announcement since the Riverfront Park released these photos back in March. Oh my gosh, those slides look so much fun. The theme of the playground is Ice Age Floods since they are responsible for sculpting this unique geography in our Spokane region. Riverfront Park says the goal of the playground is to create an exciting, safe and dynamic place for kids. And hey, Ooh. that looks like so much fun. I wish they had something like that for adults. Right. Well, maybe we can go try it out. <laughs> the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile is here in Spokane. They will be here the rest of the week and the giant hot dog is on a mission to make people smile. They'll be here <laughs> at the uh, Fred Meyer locations all over Spokane, but today you can find them at the Fred Meyer on Thor Street, and they'll be there from 10 a.m. until 4. You saw our friends Jeremy and Dana Marie. They <laughs> already got to check it out. They got their, uh, I believe, some coupons and then some fun giveaways, so you can check them out today. And fun fact, did you know this iconic vehicle has been cruising Cute. the hot dog highway since 1936? And look at those the cutouts. Kiddos. Love it. Well, that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. 
Well, more and more runners are completing their Bloomsday Worldwide race this weekend. Just got to watch out for the potholes. <laughs> well, I caught up with a Bloomy who's ready to race in her wheelchair. You're not going to want to miss it. Plus, this morning, a Washington man is gaining national attention for taking over 100 people on a hike to the Grand Canyon during the pandemic. Now he's facing federal charges. We'll tell you the whole story in our next half hour of Up With Prem.